Hello everyone. Today I'll try to explain one of the most important design related interview topic which is solid principles. So before we start if you are new to the channel please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to leave a like or comment. So with that let's start. <music> start writing a code what mainly we consider writing a code which satisfies the present requirements also which can accommodate the future requirements easily this should be the goal of every developer because evolving with the time is the only factor which can keep us going otherwise you all know what happened with the organizations like yahoo or nokia as they did not evolve with the market so they vanished Solid principles helps you to write such code which is extensible and can be easily extended for the future requirements. So what does the solid principle actually means? Well, it's just an acronym for the five principles which are listed here. First one is S that stands for single responsibility principle which is also known as SRP. Then we have open closed principle. After that we have Liskob substitution principle. For I, we have interface segregation principle and for D, we have dependency inversion principle. Let's try to understand what all these principles mean one by one with examples. So let's take a look at single responsibility first. The name itself suggests that the class should be having one and only one responsibility. What does it mean? Well, let's take the class A which does the following operations like open a database connection, fetch the data from database write the data to an external file you may say what is the problem with this class it has three methods doing different things which satisfies the current requirement in a way it is correct because it is doing what is expected from it but it is not extensible now let me explain what that means as this class handles a lot of operations a lot of different operations suppose any of the following changes happen in the future suppose a new database is introduced or it has adopted a new ORM for managing the queries on database or there is a change in the output structure of the query. So in all those cases, the above class would be changed, which might affect the implementation of other two operations as well. So ideally, according to SRP, there should be three such classes having the single responsibility. That is, first class should be responsible only for the database connections. Second class should be to fetch the data from database and third class which will be using that fetch data and writing it to the external file. So in that scenario, if any of these things happens like a new database is introduced, then only the uh, first class will be changed where we are trying to make a connection. Second one is open closed principle. This principle suggests that classes should be open for extension but closed for modification. What this means is that if a class A is written by a developer 1 and if the developer 2 wants some modification on the same class then second developer should be easily do that by extending a class A but not modifying anything in class A itself. In simple words if any new functions or functionality to be added in the existing class then the same class should not be modified but a new class should be created which extends the existing class or interface and then add the functionality to that newly created class. It is intended to mitigate risk when introducing a new functionality. Since you don't modify the existing code, you can be assured that it would not be broken. It reduces the maintenance cost and increases the product stability as well. The next one is Liskov substitution principle. This principle suggests that parent classes should be easily substituted with their child classes without blowing up the application. If a section of your code is extending a superclass, then all the subclasses of that superclass should be able to replace the superclass in your code. Let's take an example to understand this in simple way. Let's consider an animal parent class with one method which is make noise. Now let's consider the class cat and class dog which are extending animal. Now whenever in our code we were using animal class objects we must be able to replace it with the dog or cat without exploding our code. The child class should not implement code such that if it is replaced by the parent class then the application will stop running. 
The next principle is interface segregation principle. This principle suggests that many client specific interfaces are better than one generic or one general interface. This is the first principle which is applied on interfaces. All the previously discussed principles they were applied on classes. Now let's try to understand interface segregation principle with a very simple example. So suppose you have this interface which is a banking interface. It has following four methods. First one is to add a user. Second one is to delete a user. Then we have two methods which are for deposit and withdrawal of the money. So while implementing this interface, suppose there is some service which is only related to adding or deleting a user. But when they try to implement this banking interface, they also have to provide some implementation for deposit or withdrawal as well. They will be forced to do that. So how this issue can be fixed? So it can be broken down into two different um, interfaces. First one is banking user operations where the methods related to user like add user or remove user or user management those can be kept so that all the clients which are implementing only those type of operations those can easily extend banking user operation interface and they don't have to deal with deposit and withdraw and similarly for the transaction level implementations they can implement banking transaction operations so that they also don't have to deal with add user and delete user. The next one is dependency inversion principle. This principle suggests that classes should depend on the abstractions, not on the conclusions. What does it mean that we should be having object of interface which help us to communicate with the concrete classes? What do we gain from this? We hide the actual implementation of suppose class A from class B. So if class A changes, the class B doesn't need to care or know about the changes. That is the benefit we can get from using the dependency inversion principle. Now let's see what are the benefits of using solid design principles. The following are the five advantages of using solid design principles. Number one is accessibility. The solid principle ensures easy access and control of the object entities. Then we have ease of refactoring. Software changes over the time. Therefore, developers need to build an application while keeping in mind the possibility of future changes as well. So if uh, any software is poorly structured, then it is very difficult to refactor the code. But if the code is written using solid principles, then it is it becomes very easy to refactor the code. Third one is extensibility. Software go through phases of upgrades, including extra features. If extending the features of an application is not done tactfully, this could affect the existing functionality and cause the unintended problems as well. Next is debugging. Debugging is a crucial part of software development process. So when software applications are not adequately designed, it is hard to debug the applications. The solid principle incorporates the features of ensuring that debugging process of the software is much more comfortable. The last one is readability. A well-designed code base can be easy to understand and read. Readability is also an essential element in software development because it makes the debugging and refactoring operations easier. Especially in open source projects, the solid principle approach ensures that your code is relatively easier to read and understood. That's it for this video. If you like the video, please go ahead and click on like. And if you are new to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe. And also don't forget to leave a comment. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.